could, could you just borrow anything? Mm -hmm. Kathy, do you have an extra one of those too? Yeah. Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. This is Schomburg, but this is the learning for me too. <laughs> we'll wait for right. Kathy to finish that. Is Kathy, is that for this meeting? This is lately. Okay, they can, we'll give it to them after this. Well, yeah, give it to them now, then they can oh, use it. Yeah, I got it. No, it says file not found. Oh, that's that's going to be good. Did you write? Yeah. Good evening, and welcome back to Michigan, Doug. Well, thank you. <laughs> Could we uh, stand for the pledge and a moment of silence, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, seeing no public here, we're now down to our. Uh, yes, let's do roll call. Should we take this personally? Nobody can. Commissioner Kramer? In attendance. Commissioner O'Rourke? Yes, here. Commissioner Rexrope? Present. Chairman Wessel? Here. Commissioner Ross? Present. Commissioner Algeyer? Here. Commissioner Lautner? Present. Is there any public comment? Seeing none, uh, we have one uh, purpose uh, for the work session. And Deb, you want to introduce it? Sure. Um, based on uh, some of our previous conversations in terms of just getting a better understanding of budget processes and the chart of accounts and the claims, I thought it might be helpful to do a little mini work session to be able to um, educate all of us, myself included, on the processes. So I appreciate so much Kathy and Jen and Michelle helping to put this together um, collectively. So I'm going to turn it over to them. Good evening. Good evening. So um, Jen and Kathy distributed a few items to you. And we're not sure yet what your questions are, but we're happy to answer whatever they are. There are a few items in front of you that I just want to review with you. Um, the first thing that, of course, and I need to address this more to our new commissioners because I know that Melinda, when and Ty know what I'm going to say, but it's just I want to start with some basics. Um, every year when we approve the budget, um, the one document we have in front of you is called the Real Not County Resolution, and it's the Fiscal Year 2023 General Appropriations Act. The that document is approved. It's what it says it will follow the Uniform Budget Act. It's adopting the budgets for all departments and agencies. And it um, also adopts um, your special revenues, your budget rules, your staffing levels, and everything that we do. And it also outlines in that document the different millage rates for the Truth and Budgeting Act. It establishes the levy of 4.3 or 25 mills for the county, and it breaks down on page two that 3.3580 mills are allocated operational purposes for the county, and that's what funds your general fund operations for the county. And then it talks about the 5000 mills that are voted load funds, and it should vote on that every other year. Uh, 0.3134 are voted senior services and 0.2111 are voted early childhood. And there's a list on the back as to how long some of those funds are set. Now as far as the 3.3580, that has been a rollback in your rate since about 1967 or 69. I don't remember what year it was. And the only way we will ever be able to go ahead of, uh, beyond that is to have a heavy override millage. Um, so every year that goes back, and you set that rate as board of commissioners. I believe, is it Jen? Is it in April? So it's May. It may, the May board. It, that's when that amount comes up. Okay, so that's something we'll be doing later this year. But uh, this is this is the Appropriations Act, and you might just want to read that. I mean, it's pretty generic. It's the same over here. Uh, any questions on that? I mean, it's pretty blocked. 
Okay, the next thing you should have in front of you is just adapted again. Um, it looks like this. It's the fiscal year 2023 budget rules. And those are your budget rules. They are what you set and they are what we internally operate by, especially from a financial standpoint. We are, we, these guide us as far as county purchases, when bills can be paid, what should be bid out. Um, prior to June. It also talks about authorized staffing levels. And I should go back to this appropriations that we added this about 10 or 15 years ago in here. That, uh, I can't find you before that cash. Oh, elected officials. We had to, we had to add this. Elected officials in the county department has shall abide by the budget rules as adopted and amended by this board. So we just, as elected officials, we just can't go off and do it whatever we want. We are expected to follow these, and our budget is given to us based on we will comply with the rules. So the budget rules talk about um, procurement. They talk about capital purchases. Um, the chief administrative officer, the county administrator, um, together with the finance director shall jointly be responsible for assuring any transfer or expenditure and excessive approval. So it just pretty much goes through every single thing that we do. Um, it also expressly prohibits department heads from utilizing personal service contracts to circumvent the intent of the board of commissioners. So how might that happen? We really frown on people piecemealing a project or an item to avoid your approval. That's really frowned on, and we will report that to the administrator. And if we don't get much left, much traction there, we will find a way to let the board know because we just can't have people doing that. We've got processes and procedures that have to be followed. Um, it also tells us in here about what type of bills we can pay, what we call on Friday checks, which are part of your post audit, and what we can pay for claims and accounts. As a board of commissioners, one of your primary duties and your fiduciary responsibility is to approve all bills that are paid by bill in our county. You work off, you get them before your board meeting. We get two different sections, which is called claims and accounts and post audit claims and accounts. So post audit claims and accounts are for the month prior. So all post audits you are looking at tonight were from December of 22. And they were items that we were allowed to pay for outside of the budget rules. It might have been utilities. Um, already approved items that you already said we can purchase X, Y, and Z for X amount. Um, health insurance, items like that, and contractual court appointed attorneys, jury fees, there's a whole list of postage if that needs to be appeal and oil charges, utilities, um, like I said, our health insurance, anything also that might be through a um, collective bargaining agreement. So that's what your post audit is made of. Occasionally there may be um, an emergency that requires the county administrator to sign off on it, but we need to be very cautious about that. Go ahead. Do you want to go into, like, I think this month's post audit is a million eight, but what might have made, you know, it's going to sound like, holy smoke. Yeah. Yeah, a million eight. So what were the big things in there? Because we're at the beginning of the year, so. Well, I mean, it might be like the. Your December payroll was 680000 So we've got our payroll plus, it says September, but that is December. Right. Um, you know, we also had our files so that wouldn't have generated enough that much. Um, do you ladies know anything that would have generated? I mean, you're always going to see a high total. I don't know if there were any tax points going out. There would be. Each month there would be. You know, yeah, so that right, right. especially because you're going to have your distributions from your treasurer's office to the deaf agencies, all the townships for tax collections, and things like that, but you always get copies of that because one of your rights or responsibilities, well, Linda will know because she's been here when we used to do this, and there are still counties that do that, where they physically come in and they look at every invoice. The law hasn't changed on that. 
they come in, they look, they stamp them. That is the right of commissioners, and I know there are, are still counties um, that do that. And we give you a printout, but it is your right to look at any English you want because you are the ones that are saying they may or may not match. May I go with you? No, that's what I was going to say. <clears throat> so this is one of the many Boy, items that can. drives how we pay bills. It talks about setting the per diem on the full day and half the day rate. Um, so this is just a really um, helpful thing for you to know what, what's guiding what we're doing. Because we're also, when we're looking at what we're paying out, we might have our budget rules, but we also have the Department of Treasury government we have to be very aware of those rules we also have to be aware of IRS implications to what we're doing whether we travel how we're reimbursing employees that all comes into play and what we can and can't do because it is taxpayer dollars it's a lot different than what we might choose to do with our own home money or our private what we do in the private sector we do a lot of times can't do here so that's one of the things that guides us now any questions yeah. yeah, I'm not sure I fully understand the difference of even between the post auto report monies and the late claims additions. Can you, can you differentiate okay. that for me again? So, so the late claims and accounts that you get? Or just claims just, and accounts? Yeah. Claims and or accounts. claims and accounts, yes. Okay. Yeah. Claims and accounts are items that we cannot pay through budget, um, through post audit. So, examples. Do you have some examples in here? Sure. Um, such as um, our office supplies through Amazon. That is something we need to know about. Um, we also buy things for the jail. Um, repair and maintenance items from Onyx. It could be shovels or, or something like that. And if there's something that we can put through here that might qualify under post audit, we will. So here's one. A case of sports. That's a, that's a legitimate purchase. They need them over at the jail. We have to look for claims and accounts to pay them. Um, D and W, D and W, food and flush water, coil lines. That's not allowable to be paid without your approval to pay. Um, I just was going to interject just real quick, just because we might have the same kind of mindset being private business as well. So your private business, your bookkeeper probably lets your cherry land, your DTE, your phone bill, your charter bill, your payroll all go through your bank without any approval through you. It's an automatic payment. It's just something that's that's how you do business. But then when she wants to go buy a new computer, she has to say, I need this. Now I need the toner cartridges that go in that computer. Okay, that's not just a general, okay, we need to go through an approval process and that comes out, you know, as a board approval. So I think of it as when you're looking at post audit, you're looking at what your daily business is. So you're looking at all the utilities that we have here. You're looking at all your contracts in the sense sure. to where if you're paying your health insurance for your employees, um, anything employee related, then outside that is going to be the gloves, the masks, the paper towels, um, we prefer, if we can, to put large purchases um, like um, cars or um, something. So, because in that post audit, you're seeing it afterwards. Claims and accounts, it's coming to you. If Melinda said to me tonight, I don't want to pay that bill from KSS for $1,000, and she gives us a reason why, and you all agree, it gets pulled. So, those are the things, you know, because maybe she has questions on it that she needs clarification from Jerry about, you know, like, what, what are we doing here when we could have gone and done this? That's, I think, of, of how I look at that. Does that make sense? Sure. But you've already purchased it. In essence, you have already purchased it, but that doesn't mean it couldn't be returned. Okay. If you said no, you know, like, um, or there was something. Tech, typically, the their finance director, so your account clerk is going to look at each and every one of those invoices. And that's where you're really basing on teaching your account clerk what she's looking for, what they're looking for. Are they looking that this is a Friday, or are they looking this at claims and accounts? In the <coughs> county clerk portion of this, everything we could put in front of the board through claims, we did. We had very minimal Friday check runs, unless it was miles, uh, like consumers, cherry land, those kinds of things. If you have a contract with DCS that you're running for your broadband, I would prefer to see have you see that in claims and accounts, so that you see the $6,000 that you're paying them monthly. You know, that's, that's just our our perception of how we've seen that track. But you do have a contract. If a finance director comes in under Deb and says all contracts go as Fridays, you won't see those. 
until after you'll see them after they've been paid. Um, but sometimes I think that when you put it in a Friday check or you're looking at a post audit, then a lot of times I've seen that um, commissioners, they track things as well. So that contract with DCS, it's 18 months long. So you know that in each of these, you're going to see one of those, you know, those, those types of situations. Um, so yes, we, we, our mindset is that as much can come in front of you and you see and have any questions, you certainly can. And you'll see a lot of it the same. So Jerry might get every two months, a, it's a repeat payment that he orders a thousand paper towels, a thousand toilet paper. But if he orders a thousand LED bulbs, Melinda asks why. Are we replacing all the light bulbs? Yes, we are. Did we know that? No, we didn't. You know, so is there is there a budget for that? No, there wasn't. Did Kathy and Jen work to pay, take care of it? Yes, they did. So those are the types of things that um, your finance director and your administrator will be leading you forward as to what comes in front of you and what does not. So in, in tonight's claims and accounts, I can't remember if it was Matt or if it was the sheriff or it was corrections, but there was 34 Jimmy John's sandwiches. Mm -hmm. So that caught my eye right away. I'm like, wait, what? But it was training. Training's allowed. But if it had just been 34 sandwiches <coughs> because, you know, Maybe hey, you're Todd. Because you're not going to see in your claims and accounts for you made, but you're not supposed to see coffee pots. We can't buy, we can buy, well, we can buy a coffee pot to put up there, but you can't buy a coffee pot to put in my office because it's just for the employees. Not just, but we buy that ourselves. Not a lot of the IRS commission. But wherever we can put your claims and accounts, we will. They are, it is specific in these budget rules what is allowed and what is not. They go and buy a bunch of tires for the new cars. They get oil changes. Um, we buy new monitors, anything like that. We come to points and accounts. So if we have a similar question to Melinda, like about sandwiches or something, mm -hmm. who would, on Friday or Monday morning, who do we who do we call? Who do we? I mean, you can call or email Kathy. Kathy if first. If she's not available, I okay. would be able to. Yep. Okay. And you don't mind? I mean, if we. Okay. <laughs> I just I feel like I might be calling you a lot. <laughs> oh, yeah, it gets me closer. But then both of these amounts are already part of the fiscal year budget. I mean, other than something that's been. So you're looking at. Post I mean, so if you. Right, you're looking at the post audit, right? Well, I mean, you just said office supplies come under claims and accounts, and I can't believe that you don't budget for office supplies. So, yeah, it's all budgeted. Okay, so that's that's my question. Yes. So, no, yeah. it's all it's all budgeted yeah. unless yeah. unless so the only way that a bill can be paid is if it's come to you through a board motion, um, if it's outside the budget rules. So, like for instance, um, it'll be coming up where. Um, Leanna wanted to do her new server. The server is dated in 2022. We pulled money in 2022. It's not actually going to be installed until 23. So she doesn't have to come back to you because there's a board motion, but we will put that bill in claims and accounts. So you see, she just spent $78,000. And your question could be, well, where's it gonna come from? Well, she came to me today because it's not there in 23 to spend because she did it in 20, you know, it, she blocked it for 22. So Kathy and I will probably February, probably before audit, bring, be bringing you adjustments to people's budgets in that, in like in that matter, because she does not have it in 23 when we pay the bill. It's left over from 22, um, but we will have to amend that so that she can expend that. The phone that you asked about, there's $40,000 <coughs> actually allocated. She's gonna spend 30. Um, one of the things that she and I discussed, and I know I'm going farther than I should, um, your finance director that you're going to hire is going to look at what fund balance represents. It doesn't always represent cash. So for instance, the parties that put your budget together for 23 in the telephone fund use $68,000 of fund balance. So in our world, that's in a separate checking account in our business. There's really only 54 there. So we will be cost allocating more out of the telephone, which then will hit every budget in our cost allocation because there's not enough money to pay the telephone bills at twenty thousand plus the thirty thousand. She will have no money left. So those are the things that sure. um, Kathy and and Deb, when you're looking for your finance director, it's you know when you're budgeting, what do you really have? You know, 
to, to, to get you to that next, I would say, so, pot of money. So Go we're ahead. just going to have budget amendments come across the... Yes, when, okay. I, when we bring the budget amendment, it, it's typically going to be that it was, your budget was approved, right. but at the time that the purchase is made, the money's not there. And sometimes with an explanation? Yes, with an explanation, absolutely. Okay. So when I come to you or when Kathy comes to you and your next finance director, we explain to you, like tonight I have a fund transfer for you that I emailed just a little bit ago, and I'll explain um, what that is and and, and Can regards. you take some time when we get to that fund transfer and look at it because you've all got a hard copy. I think it would be really good for you just to understand what you're looking at. So you can see a lot of these. I don't think I handed them out to everybody. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, these are all budgets. These, these here, right? Yes, that's, I gave them the example of the budget. Okay. Oh, you got it by email. Okay. Yeah, you got the fund transfer by email, but. Question on the uh, claims and reports. Uh, this week it came out with, from Christine. Mm -hmm. Last week I think it came out from who should we expect now as we go forward? That is a work in process. Okay. Uh, in the past it was always the account clerk who handled, who handled the accounts payable. And that account clerk then you sent your emails to them directing, you know, like what was this or, or whichever. Um, it, it changed a little bit after um, I left finance, um, and it was more about the administrator looking into those questions for you um, and then reporting back to you via email. Um, typically, that would be the account clerk Let's and the right now, finance. Right now, the next couple of months, you need to direct those questions to Kathy. If she can't answer them, then I will answer them. Right. That would just be but, the they, but, the, but they will be coming from the account clerk. We will okay. teach her yep, okay. to, to send them to you. And I would um, just ask that you copy me on that as well, because like I said, this is still a learning opportunity for me as well. So um, so that I'm kind of have the opportunity to kind of see what the concerns or issues are, and then I can learn that also. So okay. it's helpful. Okay. So, go ahead. Um, just an aside, I know you mentioned coffee. We do buy coffee for building safety, but it's available to anyone who walks in the building and wants a cup of coffee. So you'll see, you'll know those things go through. <laughs> yeah, the Board of Commissioners, Senior Services, and Construction Code all have coffee open to the public. And the only way that you are to be able to offer that is that it's to the public. And you will see it for the courts, and you will see it for elections because trains, the jury trials, and the trainings that we get in the public. So you will see some of that. But we, um, when I say we are talking and passing, this is how we want to get everything to rewatch this um, like a hawk. Because there's just certain things you can't do. And when the auditors come in, there's not anyone else that's going to answer to the auditors. So we want to be careful of that. All right. And I do share the mindset that these ladies have. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Next item we have in here. Um, and we're just kind of considering this like the first session because I can tell by the way Jamie's looking at me. Those are really good questions. But the next thing you have here, it looks like this is called the chart of accounts. And you will see a lot of these numbers on your claims and accounts and post are, but you'll also see in your budgets because Jen sent you all, I believe, your budget. Yep that were approved. The very first page is the general fund. This is driven by your taxes. And don't feel like you need to memorize these because perhaps when you're doing the budget for 2024 and in 25, most of these numbers will uh, have to change. There's been moved to the charge of account by the Department of Treasury, and it will be a note of other matter that they will not implement today. Um, but so we have, the first one we'll see is Board of Commissioners. All of our funds, um, we have, what, 15 digits? 15 digits. Mm -hmm. So for example, when you look at your claims and accounts, or your post audit, your first three digits indicate the fund. A majority of them are 101, which is our general fund. Our general fund consists of our Board of Commissioners, our law enforcement, he's got multiple divisions within that. Your jail, your emergency services, prosecutor, your circuit court. Um, 
because of the family division. Now, some of these are just transfers out there aren't actual expenditures coming from them. The money is going from the general fund feeding other funds. Um, but most of your departments operate out of your general fund, your county clerk. I've got several divisions. Your treasurer, register of the public health and medical examiner. And you can go right through the, um, the list there. At the bottom, you'll see what's called internal services funds. Um, and we also have our transfers. And I'm going to let Jen and then talk about that a little bit. But if you go to the second page, these are all of the other funds we're operating with. And that we have to keep track on the second page. And a lot of them, some of them are special revenue funds, some of them are capital projects funds, enterprise funds. Um, like, for example, oh, and internal service funds, that's what I was thinking of. Your internal service funds, a lot of those are cost allocated back to your general fund. And when you get into the budget process, you're going to see the flow from your general fund to these special funds and from these special funds to other special funds. It's all intertwined in how the funding for all this works out. Then we go down into some of our others, like the Leona County Dam Fund, uh, Road Commission Veterans, Trusted Agency. Uh, we might see a lot of checks in our post audit for Trusted Agency, and that is really a mechanism. Uh, and that could be a lot of what was in that post audit that someone asked about with the $50 million. Trusted Agency is more like a holding account. It comes in, it needs to go out somewhere, like maybe my um, quarters payable to the circuit court or um, overpayment. So this, I can't think of an example. All, all, the, or, all the circuit court, district court fines and that's, such that's that are state sure. allocated um, come out of that. So when a criminal is got costs and fines, um, the general fund gets some of it, but then the rest of it is all picked up by the state. So you'll see each month the treasurer will support and send through a voucher that says state of Michigan. They'll say district court, and then it'll list like seven or eight lines of each one of those that goes to the state and point it off that way. So some that's what that collection. Some, oh, so some of these funds we don't worry about too much, especially the 900 with the gas fee and the auditors. Um, we will recruit drain our drain involving fund. There's always a question about that that comes up. Are we tracking those invoices? We are tracking those invoices. In case there's ever that opportunity to get to the actual drainage district where we can charge back those amounts of money. So, as you can see, you have a lot of funds on here. Um, some of these are grant. The uh, uh, fund 260 is the Michigan Indigent Defense Fund, which is going to be coming, it just gets more and more powerful over time. That is where everyone that's arrested must have someone from the time they're arrested right through the system that they can't afford. Or even if they can afford, from the time you're picked up and housed in jail, you have to be seen by an attorney within X number of hours. You have to be followed through the system for arraignment, for pretrial, for everything from district court right to circuit court. There are limitations. Um, we have about is it 50,000 still, Jen? I know that's one of the transfers. Yeah, 53. We have a set amount. Um, of how much money we have to put into this and that amount comes from the state. Our amount should never increase. It is state funding. We have to report um, to the state of Michigan quarterly. We just about a year ago entered into a contract, not to get sidetracked here, with Paul Jabal from Grant uh, from Travis City. He's running our program now. We did have an attorney to actually do it. Um, the process, but we still have reporting and funding. Here. So that's just one of our many grants, um, budget stabilization fund, automation fund. There are lots and lots of different so funds. Um, you mentioned you mentioned Jarbo. So if you're looking through your our first, I think it was our first claims and accounts. It's over the vendor name. I mean, way over to the left, mm -hmm. and that and it says Jarbo and somebody. Jarbo yeah. PLC, yeah. PLC, I think. And then you can go over further and then there's more explanation. I think it was in, I don't, we have a hard copy of that one. When but you're looking at claims and accounts, it's just if you need hard copies of those, you just send them out via email, but we are happy to print them out and it's available. Also, if you're printing them at home, you can call the board office and you should be willing to give you the paper so you're not going through the paper. <laughs> I like to have the paper in my hands, I think it's easier. Go ahead. 
sometimes when we make motions, we get sloppy with account numbers. Yes. What guidance do you have for us when we make a motion um, to uh, cite a... We're actually talking about that a little bit with the administrator about some things that would be helpful. When you're making motions, we need who, what, when, where at minimum. We need to know who we're giving this to account for. And then we need to know what's the duration of the contract, how much is it for, and where the funds come for. Because the auditors also look at it. It's really incumbent on you to know this before you're approving stuff. And Melinda always asks the question, and we always get Tony answer it. Even he was not here, but always ask it, where's the money coming from? Mm -hmm. No. We can't necessarily decide it. You may not have the money, so you need to know. We don't want to start out in January making transfers from contingency. Depending on the expense, we want to look at the fund balance to see what's in there, but we need account numbers. And if you don't know them, we need to ask. But we're talking about possibly, and we talked about this before. Last year at this time. When I was in charge, about having these EDSs looked at prior to getting to the board. Because when we get here and take the amendments, we are at an advantage because this is what we've done. We can see these numbers aren't right. It's not that the other people are going to believe. So we don't always know. And so the goal would be to try to nip it. But the problem becomes when you're making motions off the fly. And I have seen it done. It's fine. You are bored. But when we get a motion all of a sudden for $25,000 to do A, B, and C, and we're just like, what is that? I mean, I know where I can find it for you, but we need to have it very clear and there where you expect this to come from. And when we read off the suggested motion, do you expect, uh, do you want us to read all digits? If, as, you know, I can live with, as stated, I hear, I don't think we need to read them all because as long as I'm not changing your motion, I can help you. If you only give me 101 in the last six digits, I'm going to fill in the rest. I, I'm going to do that for you. But you just have to always keep that in mind. We need to know where this money is coming from. So what do you prefer, as stated or 101 in the last three digits? Um, account number as stated. I'll go in and insert it. I'm OK with that. Jen's OK with that. It becomes a little bit more difficult when it's not generally taking minutes. Because we just know where the stuff in theater. Okay. So, like at the work meeting last week, mm -hmm. is that where we would get an idea of what we want to do? And then by this meeting, we would have the num where the numbers That's are coming from. So, last, I'm going to pick on the commissioner log for a second. Go ahead. At last, week, <laughs> okay. last week's board meeting, um, she did something, an emotion she made that was a little not incomplete. She would normally do it. Right. And she made a motion to approve the soil conservation, and she bundled all three of those together. And they were right. just in separate motions. So tonight it's on the consent agenda. Now, Based on what she said last week, when I go and do my minutes from tonight and we get to that portion on the consent agenda, because you're not going to talk about them unless someone pulls that issue, I'm going to take that consent agenda when I get to soil conservation. I'm going to specifically break each one of those board orders down and I'm going to list the corresponding amount of money with each of them so there is no confusion about what it is that you approve. So, and you need to number them, correct? Mm -hmm. It was number one, two, and three. Yeah, yeah but I mean, you will number them yep. for your records, yep. so they need to be separated. And I'm going to add that. I'm not changing yep. it because yep. you did say to approve all three, but we need that type of detail. It's really important. And we do, we do feed off of tonight's meeting what you said last week. So it's really important to read what it says on the bottom of those EDSs. Um, and again, it's different when I'm sitting in. I moved that shell. I know yeah. what you were saying because I'm listening, but not everyone's going to be able to do that. So it just gives a cleaner record if you can read off there. And we can always take a break for you people to sit down and write it out. Right. And we have done that. Because sometimes if there's seven different opinions and there's a motion made, I really don't want to get involved in the middle of that. As a rule, 
I generally will be happy to help write it if you take a break. It's rare that I won't. It's a rule I will. Uh, because it's really the chairman's responsibility to read those back, and sometimes he really doesn't even know what just happened. So we just want to be careful. I think I have it does. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, no, that was, I, I was going to say, I was a perfect example last week. That wasn't the example. The example I was thinking of is where I didn't know the account number and I turned to the clerk and yeah. said, you'll clean that up for Tuesday right. night, right? Because yeah. I know she's going to clean it up for Tuesday night. It was just, as you said, that was just a recommendation. Yeah. And then tonight we will ratify. So we have that week to clean those things up. We don't want to do it a lot, I would guess, but... We do occasionally. So one of the other um, documents Jen gave you was this revenue and expense report. And what's interesting <coughs> about this is this is in our general fund, which you'll see it says right up here, Google Small Things Fund 101 <laughs> General Fund. And this is for the fiscal year 2023. So out of the general fund, operating transfers out we give money um, to community corrections, and that's a fund 214, which you can see it's going to that fund mm -hmm. by those last three digits, which are also recorded on this fund sheet. So we have budgeted $10,350 this year. Yes, ma'am? No, I said Vanna White, Kathy. Oh, yes, <laughs> <laughs> the next line down is our 232, which is our 911 dispatch services. And we have budgeted to transfer that to them for operational $843,207. My guess is they will require that help amount, won't they? They will. Okay. That, and that's what funds your um, dispatch across the street, okay? And there are my other revenues that come in. That. Uh, right now there's tower, but that's something else that we will be discussing if you're looking at purchasing a tower or putting one up in Leelanau Township. Uh, currently, I'm only doing 50% uh, from the tower tonight when you get that. The reason is it's 195 allocated, and I think you're gonna, I'm not gonna be able to put that kind of stress on that tower fund. Um, if you're gonna be implementing and putting something up in Leelanau, we're gonna need to front that cash somewhere. And so I'm only gonna do 50% now. I'm gonna do a little heavier on the general fund than I normally would right now. Normally I split it up at quarterlies. You'll see fund transfers usually come up quarterly. Um, but without drawing that full tower down, um, I really am gonna to have to look at, uh, we will really be looking at um, how much money you're gonna to have to put one up if you get an agreement. Now, the next one down is 241, so it means it's coming from the general fund to the Veterans Memorial Fund, and that's 4,000. Um, the next one, the 260, the Indigent Defense, 52, 247, it does not matter if the indigent defense fund needs that money or not, we are obligated by law that we have to put that in. That was our stated amount, and that bucket just keeps building. The state will not give us money as long as we know they know we have funds. So that will transfer out. Um, in fact, I think it's one Jen might be proposing tonight. Yes. Um, fund 457, radio communications, 52,000, and then of course 805 is your damn fund. This is just to show you these are just these transfer outs. We have other transfers from the general fund, our 101, that do like the child care. On those funds in the general, we budget high, we might not transfer all those funds out. Because what we're doing to a certain degree is with the active funds on this sheet, we're doing a little bit of a balancing act based on the trends that we know exist. We're trying to keep the fund balances at a manageable level. Because what happens if it can change, and Commissioner Lautner has seen it with the boards, it depends on our boards, but we don't want to see this happening with our funds going up and down, up and down. Because, for example, building in rounds, it is cost allocated. No, that child care is perfect. Child care. Mm -hmm. It depends on how many juveniles. Is it going to cost us twenty thousand to house a youth out in Colorado, or is it not going to? But because some funds we can take back and get back to the general fund, or if we start depleting them, 
because they have too large of a fund balance and you're not taking the general fund as heavy, what happens to a future board is all of a sudden like where did all this expenditure come from? Or why or the opposite, why do we have all this income? So we try to our hardest to keep them level. And if we ever choose to draw down these other funds and reduce the fund balance because we see they've got maybe four or five hundred thousand in. You can't do it just cold turkey. You have to do it percentage wise to not impact in both the general fund a false sense of having more so then you create another expenditure that maybe next year you won't have a fund. Um, but we want to take questions from you and I might just Before you um, Jen, what, what what would you like to ask us? That's why it's going to be, it's so important when you are preparing your budget. One, you've got to have people that understand county government and understand the county budget because the four new people on here, it is really imperative that you understand how this money flows. First of all, how it comes into the taxpayers and all the revenues. Our, our taxes that we collect do not fund our general fund in full. We rely on a lot of outside sources for revenue, but it's imperative for you as commissioners, not that you're making you know it inside and out, like what you but where this money is moving and flowing. And do you know what I'm saying? Um, it, it's really important that you get a grasp on it. And I guess if I were doing the budget, that's the one thing I would start with you all on, is to show you how the stuff is moving from the general, how some of these funds are intertwined, and what's coming from funds. But I'm sorry, don't have. Uh, no, I guess I just. I I think that is, yeah, it's imperative you come back again. But and also, I'm assuming your or Jen, or Kathy are available. Actually, for one, I want to hey, I want to come in and so yeah. that's available. To all of us here to ask deeper questions, right? And you'll take care of that. Some some of that might be more productive in certain, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I think your questions are going to be different than Kathy's questions. Yeah. Just because right. also you can't do the interest maybe in right. something. But you are always welcome to call. We're always happy to talk to any of you. Mm -hmm. um, and the double double payments and accounts for 22 and 23, that doesn't go on forever. Pretty soon, 22 will be done. I think it's February. Yeah, we, we can, uh, for the audit, we can go all the way back to February 28th. So at your last audit, or at last your meeting in February will be the last time you see 22 and 23 split. If someone didn't get their bills to us, um, it's up to basically myself and Kathy to speak with the auditors if they if we need to do it um, to put it back or not after that time period of approval. But a lot of those things might be contractual, like Grand Traverse County right now is having a problem getting us their invoices. So when you see your um, budgetary status for circuit and district court, they may look really nice and light, um, but that's because you're missing a couple hundred or about a hundred thousand dollars in bills. So those are things that we are still able to put back. And that's the difference in the accounting world. It's accrual or cash, and we're accrual. So everything in your budget that you, like let's say for instance, when you go forward and do your 2024 budget, whatever you've allocated and someone has purchased, even in 25, we'll be putting those bills back. So here, it's 22 and 23. 22 had allocated funds. If that bill comes in, it can go back, we put it back. And then they start fresh with 23. So you really don't start seeing your 23 bills until probably February, March. We'll be putting the majority of it back to the budget of those allocations that have already been approved. And, and we did notice about Grand Traverse County. It, we knew we were watching it very closely, very and calling because it's a it's it's missing. You, when you do that, you know which bills are missing, and it's like yeah. where yeah. are we the heads off? I know. And they are having trouble. We do watch that. What is there something in the future if we have another one of these? Or I guess you could just email us and tell us what you want us to talk about. Honestly, I think it would be helpful, and we're going to get into it when we get into the budget, unless we kind of start our budget process earlier. But I didn't know if we we could probably go into more detail on like cost allocation 
and I don't know if that was fully understood. So, like, if if Jerry says, "Okay, we want to recarpet the whole building," how that's charged back to all the departments, how that's spread out, yeah, our motor also, pool fund. Well, in addition, we're also going to be looking to see what we can go to capital projects. Mm -hmm. uh, There's uh, all that, and then we've got you know. The, so what she's talking about is our maintenance department. Any specific project that we're looking at, we're going to be looking at the maintenance whether it be a fund or the general fund based on square footage of how much room we need to put in the common areas. Are these all divided for charge? Sure. Which one? Divided. The common halls, the halls, and the meeting rooms. and. Well, we it's all divided, isn't it? Departments. And on your, chart, on your chart of accounts, it talks about that. that there's funds under internal services. So, for instance, tonight uh, you have a late addition where they want, they need to purchase a copier. It's an emergency die, and so it's going to be an emergency purchase. So we actually have a fund where we, how we've done this is the copies, the copiers, we charge four cents and eight cents. Four cents if it's black and white, eight cents if it's color, and we generate revenue for how much you use it. So let's say, for instance, the clerk is really great at 1,000 copies a month, but MSU does 300. So it's cost allocated by how you use it. And then we use those funds to purchase the paper, purchase the copier, purchase the toner. And so like tonight, that's not going to come right from Amber's budget. It's actually cost allocated <coughs> together. It makes it easy. Yeah. yeah. Any of you can call us, like Commissioner Redford said, we're happy to meet you on a file and you can pick me up on to meet with other states. We're happy to answer any of your questions. You can call us whenever. Uh, and I feel a little tense for the next few weeks because we're really trying to get this audit stuff and get everything in somewhat good order. But we're happy to talk to any of you. If you have more questions, for would, would you be willing to do the same thing uh, before our February board meeting? Or session two, if if commissioners would be willing to do that. Like you mean before the regular session? Oh, before the regular session, right. yeah. Mm -hmm. And if you have some topics or some questions or tell us what you want us to focus on, don't talk about. You don't want us to talk about. Uh, having to do that. Or I think it's a great idea. I just realized yeah. too, I didn't give you the uh, three late dates that was in your email. I gave you the two late dates, but you need this one. Thank you very much. We yeah, we have 2023. Yeah, she should be introductory. <laughs> At, at this point, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, we have been having a. It's a 19,000. Yeah. She's the hard copy. Oh, the hard copy. Sorry, you're not the end. Sorry, are we adjourned? No, we are not. We have to do public comment. We've been having a uh, budget uh, session for commissioners, uh, but at uh, this time, anybody that wants to make a public comment about our budget planning, I think mostly. Uh, we'll be starting our new meeting at 7 o'clock, and at that time, we'll open it up for public comments as well. But if you have any public comments that you'd like to direct to the board at this time, uh, you could be recognized. Seeing, seeing none, Thank you. could I uh, suggest we adjourn? Yes. Thank you. We will recommence.